everyone welcome back so we've got another tutorial we've got another image sent in and this time we're trying to get a really really warm look so quite bright and vibrant but there's a lot of fade and a little bit of grain so we'll get over to her instagram and i'll show you guys her work so you guys go give her a follow down in the description i'll be putting her links down there for you so if we come down you can see the image we'll be working with a bit further down this one right here so really really nice photo so as you can see the whole image is very warm and there's not many shadows so when I mean there's not many shadows those blacks very quickly transition into highlights so it's like the shadows are missing so we've got quite dark blacks and then it very quickly rolls off into uh, highlights so that's how we know we don't have too many shadows but then we also have a good fade so if you look at images such as this one you can see the bright sky is kept very flat if we threw this into Lightroom and looked at the histogram uh, the white point would be pretty far away from the edge and we'll just talk a bit about the uh, settings for this photo so if we just go click into it so this photo was shot on a 5d mark 4 canon uh, on a 35 millimeter 1.4 and as for aperture it was 1.6 so you can see there is quite um, a shallow depth of field there the background is blurred out at 35 millimeters obviously and then an ISO of 400 so it's quite a bright day so you don't need a high ISO and then a shutter speed of 2000 so nice quick shutter speed to um, expose the image correctly so yeah that's about it guys remember her links are down in the description go give her a follow down there she's got really really nice uh, photos and content so let her know you found her through this tutorial and let's get into this one here we have the image she sent me and then the edited one so first thing I'll do we'll add in lots of warmth because as you can see we want that warm look so we'll get a bit closer by adjusting the warmth here by a few thousand and exposure we want it a bit brighter just to get closer a closer starting point and let's drop um, some contrast and exposure wise we're already pretty good um, we'll up the shadows because her images look quite bright and vibrant not really bright and vibrant but just a bit more so what gives that look the most is lifting the shadows so i'll just lift them a bit now it starts to look a little warmer and bright shadows sort of goes with the really warm tones that we've added into the image and then as you can see we don't have bright highlights so um, if you look back here right back here is probably the brightest area of the image so if I just click this here I'll try to do it now so if you click this it should show you where it's clipping so as you can see so that's when the whites here go past the point where you are able to have detail so if I lift the whites back there is the brightest part of the image I'll just click that off now um, and we are much brighter in our one than in her ones she's got a very flat look so I'm gonna bring down the whites a bit and we are starting to look a little too flat you might think we should bring up our contrast but I'm gonna do some work in the s curves so I'm gonna leave it extra flat right now I'm going to drop the highlights because then once I'm done with the curves um, yeah uh, then we can come back here and fine-tune it so I just want to do a normal s curve and then I'll just explain all the curves after I've done them Okay. 
Okay, so that's the curves done. And as you can see, we're using this curve as the fade. So if you look at the whites back there, we have brought them down and you can start to see, um, especially if I show it in the blacks. So let's do a really strong fade in the black. So let's bring the exposure down so it's more obvious. Let's lift the black point for that fade that we have. Now you can start to see that it's almost like you're looking at the image with like a brown see-through bit of plastic or piece of paper. So it's got like a filter or a fade on top of it. So if we just come back and that's how we had it. So most people ask, why not just bring up the blacks here? Why bring them up here? It's because they affect the image very differently. So now if we bring up the blacks here, you can see we don't have that fade that down here gave us. If I just do it real quickly again. That fade in the blacks there and then go back. And then lift up the blacks here. I think of these tools up here as revealing detail or brightness. So as you can see, we can see more detail in the darker areas if I bring them here. Down here is a fade and it will very slightly bring out more detail because you're kind of brightening the image by adding a fade, but that's what I think of. So as you can see, we can't see that detail now that we've brought up that black point, that detail is gone. But if we bring up the blacks here, we can see that detail. So we'll move on. It's the same goes with the highlights. It's a bit trickier to notice the highlights if it's been brought down up in these tools or if it's been brought down here. Um, so, okay, I'll just go back. So as you can see, we have like a richer contrast now that we have done an S curve in the red, green and blue channels. I'll just show you them. As you can see, it's just a, this is a very, very typical S curve. What you wanna do is just um, like if you want to make a beginner's S curve, just put the dot right in the center there, bring down the shadows a bit, and yeah, just match up. Try to match up your curve exactly the same on each of these. So if I get rid of this, uh, get rid of this curve, sorry, and then if I reset, so this is with, I mean without, and now with red, green, and blue channels, and not including this. So you can see that there's not a color shift sometimes you want a color shift there's just pretty much more contrast in the image but what people do they get creative and they'll be like a bit more red in the midtones there or a bit more red in the shadows so that would give quite a vintage look if i did that so we'll just come back okay we'll move on with these tools here so as you can see we look a little dark um, I think what's happening here is that we've got a bit of a vignette going on. So up in the corners, you can see how it's a bit darker and down here it's really dark and we don't really want that. We're, the exposure looks pretty good in the middle, middle of the image. So what I need to do is enable profile corrections. Should have done that right from the beginning, would have made things a lot easier, but this is something I noticed a little later on. So now we look okay let's darken these blacks a bit now we're a bit too bright in those dark points so those darkest areas let's bring blacks down a bit okay i think we're looking good now let's move on to color so i'm going to come straight down to the bottom here now she's been helpful enough to help me with a few of these settings because when it comes to calibration down here it's very very hard to tell if someone has moved stuff down here most of the time I can get away replicating it in the uh, HSL but sometimes it's necessary to move them here in order to achieve a color but most of the time you don't need to I don't think in this style you'd need to the reason it can be handy to use these sliders and is necessary sometimes is because sometimes you want really warm yellows but um, like you get stuck you can't go any further than a hundred 
and then when you combine it with a shift down here that's how you get past that 100 point so that's the only way i see you need to shift these down here um but we'll go with that for now that just added quite a bit of redness into the image right let's fine tune some colors so in the shadows we want to give this warmth well first of all we'll just take out those yellows because they are making a really big difference in this image take them down a bit take down some of those oranges as well Um, we'll bring up the yellows because we want that real vibrant look to the grass and stuff you can definitely see that so brightness of the yellows will give a quite a bit of a pop to this image um, what were we going to do we're going to do split toning so this is where we're going to get a lot of that warmth we see in the image we've put quite a bit up put in up here you don't want to put any more than like 2000 warmth sometimes um, you want to do some in the split toning so we want to put it in the shadows so let's go with that there okay now we just need to like shift these greens our greens look way too warm and stuff so we'll just do some HSL now and we should be able to match up our colors really well so hsl our greens as you can see we've got we've got warmth throughout the whole image but our greens have become really warm so what i'm going to do is just shift these towards more of a blue uh, it's not really affecting them that much we'll try the yellows so sometimes in the camera greens get registered as yellows so i'm going to shift the yellows because they're affecting the greens a lot a little more towards the green and then some of the greens that are there we'll shift them across a little bit okay um let's come up still a little bit of clarity clarity is this crispness just a tiny bit there keep going um, saturation um, about good let's come down let's just add in some grain quickly so just a little bit and see if you look at her face and stuff that's a really easy place to spot grain okay let's really fine tune the rest of our colors here and then we should be done so um, right let's shift not many reds in this just a tiny bit in the face you can see there's hardly any reds um, we'll leave them about there not many aquas I'll shift them a little bit towards the teal blues hardly any go a little bit towards a teal well just just because um going by other images like uh there is a little bit of teal held in the sky to those blues um right saturation just bring out a little bit of color in her face now luminance so I'll just deepen some of these colors um, yeah deepening the oranges sort of gives that brown gives those brown tones a really deep look so again lumin luminance is the brightness of colors I'm just going to drop them 
to give that deeper look to the oranges. The greens. Okay, um, what I want to do is I need to darken the front of the image here. So it's too bright in the bottom. So if I grab a filter, now we've already got it placed for this tutorial. And what I'll do is just drop the exposure. And that just sort of frames her face a bit more. It just gives more light on her face or gives the appearance that there's more light on her face by taking away light from the bottom here. We don't want our eye down the bottom we want it up here because that's where everything's going on her face and the the lighthouse back there um yep roll with that now everything's looking pretty good luminance the greens let's drop them a little probably it's only very very faint back there but they don't look like they've got much of a shine and remember because want they, they do look quite deep and remember uh green green's got pretty re registered as yellows and okay um that looks pretty good guys um right maybe yeah i'll just probably leave it there um we look a little more contrast in there's maybe let's maybe just go back to here remove that little bit of shadow i put in maybe um yeah i think that looks good maybe a little bit of brightness to her face. So if we just draw one of these and if we invert it, just a little bit of light, tiny bit. And yeah, I'm happy with that, guys. If I just flick our before and after, so before, after. So the key things about this edit was um, adding in lots of warmth to the entire image and then placing quite a bit more in the shadows. And then, um, yeah, definitely a nice strong fade to the highlights and blacks there. Now, if you did a fade this strong, it might look a little unnatural so by doing an s curve here sort of counteracts it a bit so like if you did a curve like that and the red green and blue channels you you would end up with something with this that does the same effect as this so this counteracts it but that means you can lift it up this far so don't don't be dropping it this much if you don't have red green and blue channels doing an s curve if you know what it, if you know what i mean um i'll cover it in another tutorial anyway um yeah there's our before and after we had to shift the yellows to more of a green and that is because we added so much warmth to the entire image that our things that were already warm like our yellows became too warm so you balance them out by shifting them towards a green um, and yeah, we look about good. There's probably um, maybe a little too much contrast in our image. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm happy with that, guys. Again, there's our before and after, and I'll just leave it there. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll be catching you in the next one i'll just maybe add in that little bit of shadow down there um yeah i'll leave it there guys thanks for watching is that before and after once more
Okay, so one thing I noticed that is a little different is that we look a little orange. Over here, I think we have a bit more of a green tint. Now, this is very slight and it's pretty hard to notice, but I just think we look a little warm. I want a bit more of this yellowy green tint to our image. And most of the colors we're getting in this image is from the split toning and in the shadows. So you can see if I shift that, if I just take away the saturation, you can see how many colors that takes out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift it away from the reds because I reckon we need more of a yellow or a greeny um, cast. So you can really see that maybe like in the background there, our one just doesn't have that quite green, yellowy tinge. We look a bit extra warm. So I'm going to shift this over in this direction so it's going to introduce the slightest and more amount of greens and yellows and take away the red so there's over exaggerated example for you so very slightly shifted it in that direction and now our, since we added more yellow and greens the yellow and greens we already had in the image are becoming too saturated so you can see right there it's a bit too saturated and um, like I said before our greens are very much registered as yellows in this image so I'm just going to take down the saturation of them by a bit about down to there and yeah I'm pretty happy with that one and like I might even shift it back a touch let's go with Let's go with that. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. There's our before and after. If I hit Command Z, Command Z again, there we go. And yeah, that's it guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you like that one. Okay, hope you like that tutorial guys. So remember comment down below who you guys want to see because then I go through all the comments and reach out to them on Instagram, ask them to send in a photo and then do a tutorial on them. Go give her a follow over on Instagram guys. Link down in the description. Uh, check out LUTs if you are interested in video color grading. So visit martintrader.com if you're interested in those. And there's also free presets available for you guys. So if you sign up for the email list, there's, um, I think, five summer presets and five landscape faded presets for you guys. So head over to martintrader.com, check those out. And yeah, check out the presets. Heaps of awesome, awesome feedback on those. You guys are loving them. And yeah, comment down below who you guys want to see, what you thought, how I can improve these videos. And leave a like. And I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.